Hi, I'm Heinbach. It's good to have you back. Welcome to this month's Patreon Q&A, where I answer the questions that were sent to me by the people that support what I do on Patreon. If you want to get a question in, just subscribe to any tier and look for the sticky thread every month and ask one question per month there. Without further ado, let's get to it. Nate Tarnoff. I recently found a Marans tape deck similar to the three-head unit you have. A lot of the connections have grit, patina and grime on them. What do you recommend for cleaning the machine up before I start using it with my gear? I use uh, isopropanol alcohol, like this 97, 98 type percent stuff. That works well for anything that's metal or even harder plastic. For rubber parts, uh, like oh, pinch roller, I use printer cleaner they've got special printer cleaner that yeah that won't eat up the rubber so that's what i use and then i use q-tips or if i'm feeling fancy i've got little leather tips that i get from dark lab in germany also don't forget you need to degausser to demagnetize all the parts in germany it's called an entmagnetisiert rossel i think it's a degausser in english Jack Myers. Hello, Heinbach. I own Fundamental, and it's not clear to me how to record its sounds into my DAW, which is Ableton. Could you please explain or make a video that demonstrates st start to finish how to record sounds from Fundamental to my DAW? When I open it as a VST, it populates in Ableton, but no played sound is recorded in the program while record is on. All I get is silence when trying to record. Thank you. Ah, yeah, that's a quick thing that I answered already, because Fundamental is a plugin, so you need to... It will when you hit record in Ableton, it won't bounce an audio track. It will just record all the MIDI stuff that is happening. If you want to record it to edit, you need to yeah arm another track and then choose fundamental as the input. And then you can record and yeah edit that as you like. And that's a technique that I often use also to get many variations of one patch because yeah, fundamental has all these wonderful random functions there. So that works really well. And of course you can just bounce a track, freeze, and then uh, I think it's safe as audio track and then it will be an audio track, but yeah, then again, you won't be able to edit anything anymore. DMARC. Any suggestions how to avoid abusing creativity as escapism? Asking for a friend. Well, um, escapism in art is something that I think is pretty fine. It's something you can indulge in and it's one of the nicest ways you can get away from what's bothering you. But I tend to use my art more to deal with this stuff and that's happening. So I'm not escaping from it. I try to... I tried to deal with it in music, especially when I used to write a lot more lyrics. I used to take everything that was bothering me or that was, bothering is the wrong word, that was, that I was struggling with and put that into music. So it was a form of therapy maybe. Nowadays, I think I try to deal with stuff that bothers me more in real life and the art is something that can be used as an extra expression of that. But yeah, I just changed that view simply because I learned that talking to people helps a lot. And writing a song is something that's nice. And then you can say, here is my whole heart, but people will just listen to the melody and maybe the chorus and the drums and they won't get what I was trying to explain with that song. Maybe because the song sucked, but maybe that's just the way music works. It, it's not nearly, it's not really, or even art that itself, it's not really a direct uh, form of communication that can help you deal with your problems or yeah, the issues that you have with people. Because most of the issues are with people or with society in general, I think. Yeah, so that's just how I deal with it. This is a very, it goes very personal, very quickly, interesting. But yeah, try to tackle some things in your art, but also try to engage with it in real life. I hope that helps. Carsten Sulzberger, you have a lot of gear and you're really creative. <laughs> Thank you. How did you do this? I'm lost in my gear, stuck and can't be creative. I think for me, uh, it's all about 
scheduling. It's just having a limited time slot where I just show up and make my art. And usually I have a lot of art that I have to do simply to pay the rent because this is my business. I write music. And uh, so creativity for me just means showing up at my studio and then working on something. And I've made my studio to be so that I'm always able to create anytime. I can simply go to this spot, this spot, and this spot, and there's something new there, and there's a new thing that I can try or a new idea. All these little islands are a bit different. And sometimes it's just, I don't know, an iPad and the kitchen table. That's a source of inspiration for me. So the gear, if it hinders me, that's usually when it's broken. So I have these days where I spend time fixing everything, going over connections, and I really want to play everything all the time, and that has become kind of impossible. So I set aside like months for a certain thing that I want to try. I want to do my modular justice, and I plan to do that in the month of December, which is this month. So that's one of the goals I have, to really work with the modular again in December and January. Trey Milner. Would you consider making more plugins like the wire recorder for the passive bandpass filters, like the Breland Clear or the Ellison Labs? I'm talking with Audio Thing, and we're we've got so many ideas. I think ideas what to do is yeah, that's not the problem. It's yeah, it's just which one should we do? I definitely would love a passive bandpass filter project. So yeah. Please, if you've got suggestions, what you want of the things that I covered recently, you can put them in the comments. It's It helps to know what people are interested in because I really loved working with Audio Thing. It's been a, such a pleasure to work with them and I want to keep on doing that. So yeah, if there's interest, I'll be keeping on developing with them. So yeah, I think that's a, that's like a... A likely, a likely maybe, <laughs> but yeah, a filter project would be lovely. I mean, yeah, these things are, are pretty rare to come by now. John Irons. Hello, Heinbach. Thank you for providing this forum for questions and for sharing your music and techniques with the world. You're welcome. I've noticed in quite a few videos that you have a big shelf with all kinds of books in your studio. This got me thinking about one of my favorite books, Thomas Mann's Dr. Faustus. Have you read it? If not, what are your literary inspirations? I think that many of the character Adrian Leverkin's works, especially his Apocalypsis Cum Figuris, are compatible with your own. I dream of a seared, I dream of a seared Lombarda orchestra arrangement of that piece. Now I have to read Dr. Faustus. I'm always, Thomas Mann is something that I try to, <laughs> I try to not read because the run-on sentences, they, they kill me. I got around reading Effie Briest in school by writing a music piece where I contrasted a soft melody for Effie Briest with the sampled and cut up uh, recording of Poison's Gloria, Rush, the march. So I didn't have to read the whole book and I got an A. But yeah, I think that book is interesting. Right now I'm reading a lot. I'm reading a lot of Joe Abercrombie and uh, it's fantasy. Like, is it hard fantasy? It's very political, gritty and fun for me to read just now. And I just got a few new books on theory and musicians' biographies that I'm also diving into. But yeah, I am I tend to read an hour a day now at least. Yesterday it was two hours because I couldn't really sleep. So yeah, I know, I realize that I'm a bit tired today from reading. Sergei Katayev. You recently started doing collaborations to create some beautiful sounding plugins, but what about hardware? I assume that would be a lot harder to do, especially with the current situation. Do you have any ideas for that stuff? Did anybody contact you with proposing such a collaboration? Who would you love to collab with on hardware? I've got ideas. I mean, I'm definitely not lacking in ideas for any kind of instrument, plugin, or anything like that. But right now it's a bit of a nightmare to organize anything, I think. I see all these delays that every manufacturer has, so I would be hesitant to start something right now. But if a right collaboration partner comes around, and I've already talked to one or two in general, and just see what it is, and I've got ideas. Let's just put it that way. I just can't put them out right now here. 
So, yeah, but software is absolutely perfect right now for the time that we live in. At some point, to be involved in something hardware, it's something I would be happy to do. And yeah, would actually be fun. So a definite yes with an indefinite uh, how and when. Thomas Monaghan. Hello, Heinbach. Have you used any of the Teenage Engineering pocket operators? If so, what are your thoughts on these? I ordered the PO14 and 16 and like the portability of them, but I'm concerned about the quality of the sound they will produce. I had two. I still have the Vocoder one. The other one I gave away to, uh, yeah, to a music school in uh, Macedonia and North Macedonia and with a bunch of other tools. So the kids there have something to play with. It's not, I mean, the one thing I don't like is that it looks like a brown calculator, which my father had, and I loved playing with that, but it doesn't feel like it. So it feels really cheaply, and I don't like touching it, even though I have the custom cases for them, like the ones that that you can buy from Teenage Engineering. So I think the sound quality is actually pretty fine. I don't think it's bad in any way. It's just that I don't like the form factor that much. I pick it up and then I try to like it. I mean, I bought two and I don't. I simply don't like it. Maybe I should have gotten the drum one because drums are always a little bit more easy and fun, but the melody one that I have, I think that's the 16. I don't remember. Or the 12. And the Vokoda one, yeah, it's just... It's just too small maybe right now and too flimsy in my hands. So I'm not a fan. I'm still keeping it around because I know it will be useful for projects, maybe in theater scoring, because it's a lot in such a small package and it could be fun to have someone on stage with just a calculator, like a Kraftwerk thing. But yeah, for my own personal use, I don't tend to use them that much. Christian Volpato. You seem to get your hands on some pretty obscure stuff rather efficiently on eBay and classifieds. How do you manage to get all that stuff? Do you just know where to look? Do you use any notification service that emails you when a new item you're looking for comes up on eBay, classifieds, Reverb, Facebook, Marketplace, etc.? Just the alerts that you get in all the programs, like in eBay Kleinanzeigen or in eBay, you can set alerts for all the searches and even on Reverb. So I have those. But I think uh, I approach this more of as a job now because I've always hunted for interesting stuff that was cheap because I never had money to buy anything. Yeah, I could never afford a space echo, for example. So something like the wire recorder is a was a way for me to get uh, something different, cheaper, and that was interesting. I always try to find these cheaper alternative to things, yeah, as many musicians do. So I've been doing this for a long, long time. I think, yeah, since I was 16. And... Now that Heinbach is something of my main business and the, everything that surrounds it, I have intensified the time I put into the hunt. So every day it's a half an hour of uh, looking at things in the morning and seeing, oh, okay, this might be interesting, checking the alerts. And sometimes I just, s stuff that I would never have thought I could find just comes, pops up there and then I'm just, bah! Take it. I found recently another word generator, for example, the HP 8006A, the Booger, which is absolute unobtainium mostly, but I had an alert for word generator. And I sighed through hundreds of emails saying, oh, there's a new word generator. And it was a password generator program for 14 euro 95 or something. And then it popped up word generator and the guy had just not put the unit as the front picture, he had put a scope picture showing that it works. <laughs> so, yeah, and it wasn't named, uh, it, was, it was just named Word Generator from HP. So I got it for 100 bucks, which is a crazy price for what these things usually go now when people know what they can do. So it's always possible to find. It's just you need to invest time and, uh, yeah, and then have the money at the right point to just purchase it. And for me, of course, I can justify most of these things because every new piece is almost a new track. And that new track is something that I used to 
yeah, make music, but sell. I sell that track. I put it in a theater play. I put it online on Bandcamp. So everything just amortizes. Is that also uh, an English word? Everything just pays itself back very quickly for me, which is a feedback loop that's pretty good, I think, for me right now because everything gets used. I don't like not using gear. If I see I'm not using gear, I tend to sell it very fast. Or make statues out of it. <laughs> Simon Vargas. Hey, buddy. For those of you who don't know, Simon Vargas is a Colombian bassist and he plays in a very successful band and he posts about finding new cases for Rode and Schwarz um, UBM and stuff like that on his Instagram stories to, I don't know, 700,000 followers, which I found absolutely enchanting. And yeah, I put a link to a video of his band up there and you can see there's a beautiful moment of the handing over of a function generator. It's really interesting to see how he's going to incorporate test equipment in popular music, which is one of his goals. So, yeah, do check that out. Hey, I was wondering if you could give us a rundown of the way you plug your studio to electricity, especially your test equipment. Do you have endless sockets in your room or do you use extension sockets? Any firm or other ways of protecting your equipment? I've been wondering how to connect my own test equipment. I'd be happy to know. Cheers. This is all homegrown here. This place is just a living room. It was never meant to be a studio, so there is no real treatment that I ever done electrically. The electricity is pretty good, but <laughs> I get uh, dropouts when too much stuff is being put on. Like when I when the test equipment is on and uh, a vacuum is plugged in, pff, the breaker will just, yeah, it will fly. But it's not bad. It's just the breaker that flies. So I can turn off everything here individually. So right now I only have the minimal stuff that I need for recording this video. It's basically the computer, the monitors, and the lights. Nothing else is on. Okay, the modular is on just to provide some nice background, which is a little indulgence I do for you. But else, everything is off. The mixer, all the other synthesizers, all not turned on. So I have taken care to route everything now nicely so the audio cables and the power cables are not too close by each other because I've noticed that with the test equipment that especially resulted in some interference. And I actually bought three Furman uh, power conditioners for the test equipment because I had a lot of problems with hum in the beginning when I started building this. But uh, while I was waiting for them to arrive, um, my nephew came over and we just rebuilt everything cleanly and routed all the cables nicely and all the hum disappeared. So I use these ferments now to power the vital parts of the studio. So they are here for my rack gear over here on the studio table and to power all the high-end studio gear, like the Eventide, like my mixer, like uh, the um, RMA interface, all the stuff that's really essential is, yeah, power condition with uh, the ferments. So that's pretty good because I don't have many problems with hum. And uh, yeah, that works. But for the test equipment, it's just one power line after the other. Quality ones, not the cheapest ones. And uh, I'm able to turn it on part by part. So there won't be a huge power surge once all the tube vacuum tube stuff comes on, which can easily overwhelm breakers. I hope this helps just build it up piece by piece or consult a studio technician because yeah, they probably know how to do this stuff better than I and my homegrown way of doing things, which is probably horrible. I do have two fire extinguishers here in my studio though. I'm prepared. I think that's all the questions for this month. If you want to get a question in, subscribe to any tier on my Patreon and ask away in the sticky thread. And yeah, thanks to all my Patreons. You are the reason I can keep on making these videos and basically keep following my dreams. Very much appreciated. Yeah, that's it for this month. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.